Welcome back to my channel. I'm Casey Settleman and I'm an American giving you an informed opinion on European soccer or football, whatever you want to call it. In today's video, I will be giving you my group stage Champions League predictions as well as my team of the group stage predictions. We all saw the Champions League draw last week and we have some very exciting groups and I have some predictions that may shock you. Starting in Group A, this one will not shock you though, I have Bayern Munich topping Group A. The addition of Harry Kane is probably the best transfer the entire summer outside of Bellingham to Madrid. And bringing in Kane makes them, for me, the only real contenders along with Man City to win the entire competition right now. My second place finisher in this group though is where the shock may start as I have Galatasaray beating out United for that second spot. Manchester United will not make it out of the group and here's why. Old Trafford isn't a place people fear going anymore. So I can see Bayern going there, absolutely thrashing them with a Kane hat trick. And I could also see Galatasaray or even Copenhagen pick up a point at Old Trafford. On the flip side, you look at Rams Park in Istanbul, Turkey. Could be one of the craziest atmospheres in all of Europe. And I'll be shocked if anyone outside of Bayern goes there and gets any type of result or points from their matches in Istanbul. Galatasaray have also had a really sneaky, under the radar, amazing transfer window. A front three of Ziyech, Zaha, and Icardi is way better than a front three of Rashford, Hoyland, and Antony. Not to mention they brought in the likes of Mertens, Davinson Sanchez, Indom Angelino and more and their number one focus will be being healthy and rested for the Champions League while the vibes around United are horrid right now they will be fighting for their absolute life in the Premier League every weekend and not resting for the Champions League and Hoyland just isn't going to hit the ground running the way everyone expects him to and I think they will big time struggle it will be into the Europa League for United and Copenhagen will finish fourth into group B where Arsenal got the absolute dream draw in their return to the Champions League and as a Tottenham fan, I don't want to say this, but I'm picking Arsenal to finish top of Group B and with relative ease. In second though, I'm going with PSV. They're absolutely firing in the Dutch league and did a world of good business this summer by bringing in Lozano, Noah Lang, and the American trio of Dest, Tillman, and Pepe. Sevilla does not look good and is winless in La Liga right now at the time of recording this. And I know it's early, but their form coupled with their obsession with the Europa League, and I have them finishing third in this group, returning to the Europa League, and maybe winning it again, who knows. And finally, RC Lons will finish in fourth. They sold a lot of their core players that allowed them to finish so well last season, and I just don't really think they're a Champions League level side. Group B is a fun one, and I do think Union Berlin could make some noise in this group. The only thing that's really disappointing is their stadium isn't big enough to hold Champions League matches. So they will actually be using the Olympic Stadium in Berlin to hold their matches. So it's not even gonna feel like a true, true home match for their three home matches. I do think Madrid and Napoli will finish one and two in this group. And I'm gonna give the nod actually to Napoli. Vinny will be out injured for at least two of the six group stage matches. And Madrid has been struggling to adjust to life without Karim Benzema. And if it wasn't for Jude Bellingham's heroics each week in La Liga, they would not be sitting top of the group. And there would be some questions starting to be asked. The firepower of Osimhen and Kavara, coupled with the fact that they will be playing Madrid once without Vinny, will be enough for them to top the group. So I'm going Napoli 1, Madrid 2, Union Berlin joining United in the Europa League, and Braga in 4th. On to Group D, which is an interesting draw, but I have Inter topping this one. Laturo looks absolutely untouchable in Serie A right now, and Turam has been a great replacement for Lukaku up top next to him. In second though, I can't lie, I don't know much about Benfica or Real Sociedad, but I do know Angel Di Maria went back to Benfica, and they also have David Neres and João Mario, who are both very creative in the final third and could get Benfica enough goals to just squeeze that second spot past Real Sociedad. In terms of Sociedad, I do have them finishing third. They also have some class littered throughout their squad in Oryazabal and Zubamendi. So I have them finishing third with Salzburg finishing in last. Group E, this is a really tough group to predict as I think every match inside of this group stage could be a complete toss up. I think Atletico has enough talent and more importantly, enough Champions League experience to get enough gritty results as Atletico do to top this group. In second, I'm also having Lazio squeak by Feyenoord for that second place spot and have Feyenoord finishing in third. The Serie A has stamped itself as the second best league in Europe, and that goes to show in just how competitive it is, as well as in the European competitions where you saw last year all the success that Serie A teams had. And in terms of Celtic, 
Losing their manager as well as one of their best players, Jota, will just be too much for them. And I don't really see them competing. I have them finishing fourth. Group F, the group of death. This is one of the most exciting groups I have at least seen in my lifetime watching Champions League football. And I could not be more buzzing to watch every single game of this group. There's never a bad one. And first though, I have PSG. I know PSG underperform a ton in this competition. And I'm not saying it's going to be any different this year. But they always get out of their group and relatively easily. So this is not where they're going to underperform. And they still have the best player in the world outside of Jude Bellingham, who's Kylian Mbappe. So as long as they have Mbappe, they added Ousmane Dembele, they will be fine finishing top of this group. Second though, I'm going AC Milan. I do think this will be really close with Newcastle, but I have AC Milan squeaking it out. They, sneaky, have one of the best front threes in the entire world, and they've returned almost the entire squad that had them in the Champions League semifinal last year. So I think that, coupled with all their experience, will be enough to get them through. Newcastle in third, and it is going to be close. They're clearly struggling in the league, but their best 11 can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with pretty much any 11 in all of Europe. And those matches at St. James are going to be absolutely bonkers. If you haven't watched the documentary on Amazon Prime, I suggest going to do it. It's very cool. And I'm excited to see Champions League football back at Newcastle. Finally, I have Dortmund coming in last in this group. And I don't think it's going to be close. And it just seems like they haven't really gotten around to replacing any of Bellingham, Holland, or Jadon Sancho. And they're increasingly getting worse every single season as Marco Royce continues to age. Group G, this is a very easy one, and I'm not even going to bother wasting your time. Man City will finish top. They're the best team in the world and got an easy draw. And RB Leipzig, I think, is also great and had a very, very good summer, replacing the likes of Nkuku and Zobislai, and I have them finishing second. And I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I don't really care who comes in third and fourth in this group, so you can tell me in the comments who you think. Finally, in Group H, I have Barca topping this group. Similar to RB Leipzig, I thought they had an unreal window Barcelona with the limitations they had in terms of spending. Being able to bring in Cancelo, Felix, Gundogan, and Oriol Romeo is unreal business without even being able to spend anything it was very, very impressive. In second, I'm going with Porto. I'm not really sure what's going on with Shakhtar. And I'm not really going to comment on that whole situation. It just, I don't know if they're not playing league football this year. I don't really know how it works, but I have Porto finishing in second. Shakhtar in third and Antwerp coming in last, although I do love Toby Alderweireld and that goal he scored on the final day of the season last year was one of the most electric things I've ever seen in my life. So those are my group stage predictions. Let me know in the comments where you think I went wrong. I think my biggest call was Galatasaray over Man United and I really think that one's gonna come true. But just to recap, these are my Champions League group stage predictions. Group A, Bayern first and Galatasaray beating out United for the second spot. Group B, Arsenal first and PSV beating out Sevilla for the second spot. Group C, Napoli grabbing the top spot with Real Madrid in second. Group D, Inter finishing first in that group with Benfica in second. Group E, Atletico in first with Lazio in second. Group of death, PSG come out on top with Milan coming out just ahead of Newcastle for that second spot. Group C, City goes top with RB Leipzig in second. And finally, Group F, Barca in first and Porto in second. Moving on finally to the team of the group stage predictions. This is obviously extremely hard as one, you probably have to get the group stage predictions themselves right. And then two, who's gonna play each week, injuries, this, that, and the other. But I'm gonna give it my best go. Starting in goal, I'm going Mike Magnon for AC Milan. I think getting out of the group of death is going to be a huge feat, and I think he's going to play a huge part. He was really good for Milan last year in the Champions League, and I think he will repeat that, making save after save, and he will be the reason that they come second in that group. Moving to left back, Hernandez from PSG. He's an absolute baller, and I think PSG will find a lot of freedom in attack on that left side with Mbappe and Hernandez. He's gonna get bags of assists, and for me, he gets the left back slot in my team of the group stage. The two center backs, Kim Min Jae and Ruben Diaz. The reason I went this way is I think these two will breeze through their group stages, get a lot of clean sheets, and I think both of them are big, powerful center backs and can maybe get on the score sheet once or twice throughout the group stage. Right back, Juan Cancelo. I talked about how big of a transfer that was for Barcelona, and I think he'll play a huge part of them finishing top in their group. In the Champions League, 
the most. He always does it in the league, but it seems like he always puts on a special performance time and time again in the Champions League. Big time player on the big time stage, Ives Juan Cancelo scoring goals and assists for Barcelona, getting them top of their group. Moving into the midfield, I think attackers are going to be the story, so I'm going to cheat a little. I'm going to do two center mids, a left wing, right wing, and two strikers. So starting with the center mids, I'm going Jude Bellingham for Real Madrid. I know I have Napoli topping that group, but I think the fact that Vinny will be out, it'll show just how important Jude is to this team, getting them in second and through to the next stage of the Champions League pretty much by himself with Vinny out and Benzema gone. My other center mid, I'm going Phil Foden. He'll probably be a 10 rather than a center mid but he is going to take this over. He's gonna get some very easy games in that cakewalk of a group they have, and I expect him to have 10 plus goal involvements in the group stage. Finally, my wingers, I have Bukayo Saka on the right wing. I think Arsenal topped their group, and you've seen time and time again how involved he is in Arsenal's attack. I think he's way better than Martinelli, and Jesus coming back from injury, it might take him time. Saka is the key man for them in attack. I have him at right wing. And then left wing, this one's easy. Kylian Mbappe at left wing speaks for itself. Best player in the world will easily take over the tournament as he always does in the Champions League and have PSG top of the group. And then the two strikers up top, Harry Kane, Bayern, as I said, are going to walk through this group. Harry Kane went to Bayern to play in the Champions League and he is gonna make it worthwhile. Could get up to double digit goals in the group stage if Tuchel allows him to continue playing during blowouts. And finally, the other striker, Latoro Martinez. As I said, Inter will go top of their group and he has been unreal in Serie A and I expect that only to continue in the Champions League as Inter do have a little bit of an easy group and I expect him to be banging in goals up top. That is my prediction for team of the group stage in the Champions League. Comment down below where you think I went wrong. I think for a very tough task of a prediction like this, I actually did pretty well. So let me know what you think as a whole throughout this video of my group stage predictions and my team of the group stage predictions. I appreciate you all watching. We will visit this prediction video when the group stage is over and you can all freely roast me in the comments now and we will look back at them then or you can wait to roast me when I eventually maybe get them all wrong when the group stage is over. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already, as I will be coming out with EAFC content coming out very soon. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace.